Well, I'm not going to spend more than about 10 minutes with each one, so we should be good. We should be. Good. We've got all day, right? <laughs> Welcome. As you can see, I've got a pretty crazy assortment of tools here. These are the pretty much the vast array of tools you might need when you're tackling plumbing projects around your house. Now, as we go through this, there might be a tool you've heard of that's specialized or crazy that we didn't talk about. And for the most part, that's because you're probably not going to really come across a need for it very often at all. These are the ones that on a consistent basis over a, a period of time owning a home, you might come in contact with these tools in an effort to avoid calling a plumber. We'll start over here with some basic tools, hacksaw, um, you know, you've got a PVC saw for cutting PVC. It's got finer teeth on it and it's really thin. Um, it's designed to reduce heat as well. This one's old, but as a friend once said, never trust a guy with new tools. So I guess it's okay that it's old. Uh, this is a pull saw that is fabulous for cutting PVC when it's already in place. Um, basically, you're going to wrap it around the pipe and just continue to move it like an old school wood saw and it essentially burns its way through the PVC. They work fantastic and sometimes it's the only way you can get at something and get it cut because there's just too many things around it with no clearance. Okay, I've got a small torpedo level that I might use to make sure any sort of drain work I've done or drains I've inserted are at the right pitch. You don't want them flat or running back towards the fixture. They obviously need to have a slight drop down towards the drain line, so that comes in handy. You've obviously got Hex key assortments, and these are all attached to the same uh, tool, but you can get them individually as well. Uh, the metric and the standard, although the metric is what you're going to use nine times out of ten. Uh, obviously, you need an assortment of adjustable wrenches. We've got uh, a keyhole saw for punching holes in drywall if you need access through a panel. Uh, obviously, uh, you can't really do much plumbing without using a pipe wrench at one point or another, so pipe wrenches are great. We've got an assortment of screwdrivers, standard and Phillips, as well as different sizes. In this six-in-one tool, you've got some different sizes of them. A set of adjustable channel locks, knife, tape measure, scraper. Unfortunately, the, the scraper gets used more for scraping the wax out from underneath the toilet than anything else. So that's not a real exciting tool, but it certainly comes in handy. Um, a good light, a nice head-mounted light such as this one, will really broaden your world. Um, using a flashlight is great. A battery-powered light that can sit upright or be pointed in directions, those are all fabulous things. But what I find is in most circumstances, I'm wanting light on the area I'm looking right at anyways. And with this, I can do it hands-free. Um, this particular one is LED, so the batteries last a long time, and the bulb is pretty much a lifetime bulb. Um, so they're, they're fantastic for that. Um, we've obviously got some tubing cutters that can be used for cutting uh, PEX, or small diameter PVC. Um, they're great for that and uh, really an essential tool. No real other way to cut them effectively and quickly. Um, now for some of the specialty tools, and obviously before I forget, safety goggles, uh, safety glasses of some kind, you're going to use those on a regular basis. Not every time you're doing plumbing because some of the plumbing jobs, just there's just there's no concern for that sort of thing. But they're always nice to have around just to be prepared. Now, we'll talk about some of the specialty tools real quick. This is a slightly different version of a drain wrench. Um, it's really designed to hold baskets and strainers still. As you can see, it's got a couple of different types on it. This type doesn't fit in this particular drain, but it is designed for larger drains, this side. And then the smaller side will fit in a, a tub drain like that. It'll also fit in a, uh, a basket strainer for your sink. Uh, and basically you hold it still with either an adjustable wrench on these parts of the sleeve or you can always run a screwdriver through one of the holes and hold it still while you do the loosening and tightening you need to do. So that's a great tool. I've had that for years. It comes in handy. Now a variation on the same theme is this one here. Now as old as this one is, the reason why I keep it is not only does it have this four-pronged side that actually has teeth on it rather than that one that just sits in there, that allows it to really lock well and hold in place, and it's got a rod that comes with it. Um, it's got some challenges in that it sits so shallow with the rod, because you can see how close it is to the drain you're trying to hold still. That can be a challenge if you have to do it from the top side. But anything you have to do from the bottom side, they work out great for, like a basket strainer. The other side, though, you'll notice 
has three prongs instead of four. Now you don't come across a basket strainer or a drain assembly that has three prongs on it very often, but when you do, they can be almost impossible to get out because they've probably been in there a while, they're an older style, and without three teeth, they can be really tough to get out. So this guy doesn't see a whole lot of use since I have other versions of the four prong that work well, but the three pronger, uh, you gotta be ready for that sometimes. I wouldn't go out and buy that tool just because of that unless you already know you have a three pronger in your house somewhere. Um, but just so you're aware that it exists. Now, this tool right here is called a basin wrench. Well, it depends on who you ask. Now, what part of the country you're in, they're going to call different things. They're going to have different names for different things. But as you can see, it has spring-loaded jaws that open up. And basically, it allows you to get underneath a sink, get this wrapped around the top of the supply line, and you can turn it that way to, to get it off, to get it loosened in an area that you couldn't normally reach. And then by flipping it over, you can get it up there, grab it a hold once you've got it finger tight, and use it to tighten the top of that supply line as well. I actually have a, yeah, I've got a supply line right here. So it's, it's just designed to grab the head of that supply line like so, and allow you to get it turned and tight that way. It works even better on, on uh, the the attachments of the sinks that are smaller like that because it really gets good teeth on it then. This tool has been made fairly obsolete by another tool we'll talk about just briefly for a moment here. Um, it's a rigid tool and although um, there are other companies I would expect to sooner or later put out a tool like this, so far I haven't seen one, have you? Have you seen anybody else a version of this? I haven't. Uh, this has been a, a great tool. It's been out for a little while. Just enough for pretty much every plumber to begin to rely heavily on it. It's, uh, it's multi-purpose, kind of like your six-in-one screwdriver that has nut drivers and screw bits in it as well. This has got a bunch of different options for it. Um, this side here can be used to, in place of that basin wrench, can be used to reach up underneath the back of a sink. And you can see it's got a couple different sizes, but it will grab that supply line like that and you can turn it or loosen it that way. That's why it's got a full slot in it. If you remove this bottom fitting you can actually go all the way up and get in really tight areas with it up behind a sink. Bathroom faucets especially, man those those clearances can be really tight under there and for someone of my stature that can be a tight fit. So a tool like this really uh, gives, gives me a lot of freedom and makes me happy basically. Now um, some of the other things it'll do, some modern faucet mounting nuts, like these plastic ones on this, um, they use just, they have four prongs on it. Uh, the theory is you just tighten it by hand, but the reality of it is they often either get tighter over time or whoever tightened it used a wrench of some kind. But as you can see, it'll fit right in the notches of this tool right there, and you can use that to tighten or loosen them as well. So it's a great tool that way. So there's one more use for it. Now on the bottom side, it's, uh, it's got another section where it can grab some other uh, type of nuts that are spaced slightly differently. But then it also has this tool here that is essentially, we talked about a basin or a drain wrench. It has the four prongs on it the same way. And it fits tub drains like this. And it also fits basket strainers like this. If you take this nut off, you can see it more clearly. So when you're underneath the sink trying to hold it still, you can hold it still while using your large nut wrench to get that off. It has a um, place to grab it with an adjustable wrench right there. Or you can use, once again, a screwdriver in the slot in the hole like that to hold it still or to turn it. Or if you don't need that level of force and you have some room, you can leave it locked in the tool to use it to tighten or loosen it. So, very good tool, very handy, lots of options. Okay, next tool we'll talk about briefly. Kind of a generic plumber's tool. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it. I don't know what that name is. Um, spanner wrench. Well, spanner wrenches, most of the ones I've seen have been adjustable, but they, they do look just like this. But on this side, we've got the ability to grab a hold of the nut on a basket strainer and get it loose like this. You guys see that okay? Now it puts you right up against the bottom of the sink. 
but it's uh, your best bet in actively and effectively getting these loose. So it's a great tool for that. It also has a wrench on the bottom of it. On the other side, it has two different sizes. It has uh, one sized for one and a quarter inch and the other size for one and a half inch so that you can tighten nuts with it effectively. So a lot of purpose built into that tool as well. This tool just briefly is used to repair delta faucets and shower valves. Um, we'll, you'll see that in one of the videos if you ever need to change a delta. We'll show you how to use this tool. It's got a hex key on this side of it that fits almost every handle. You can come across in the bathroom or kitchen faucet or shower valve application in this side. The teeth are spaced appropriately to help get that basket cap loose so you can get in and get that cartridge replaced. Um, a lot of times those will come with repair kits. If you buy a repair kit, it'll come with this tool, um, but you can buy them separately as well. This tool is basically a thread chaser. Uh, I keep it handy because occasionally when you're doing um, shower trim, like a shower valve trim, the holes will get stripped out where the screws go, and this will allow you to chase those out and make sure the screws fit in good again. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to get those cross-threaded, and once you've gone just a little too far with cross-threading, a tool like this will help fix that situation. Um, this tool is, comes in very handy. <laughs> the only place I've ever used it, although it can be used in any similar application, is when I've had a tub drain that I just not could get loose, or just couldn't get loose. It was too tight, it was seized up in there, or the cross prongs on the, on the inside bottom were broken or missing altogether. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't be able to use a normal um, you know, drain basket type wrench to get it. So this slides inside it, and as you tighten the nut, I'm sorry, actually as you loosen the nut, it expands these metal fittings so that you can, it expands these metal fittings by pushing them further down on an angled shaft, and that pushes them against the wall of the, the drain assembly. And as you continue to turn it, it continues to tighten them and will begin to turn the drain as you tighten it. This is a great tool. They're not cheap, so don't just go buy one for fun. But if you find yourself in a situation where you can't get a drain loose, this is the tool for the job. Really uh, the only way I've found to do that effectively. It can be really frustrating when you realize you can't get a normal drain wrench in there and there's just no way to grab that lip to get them loose. So short of cutting the drain apart from the underside, and, and going through all of that process, this tool will take care of it for you. Okay, I'm trying to think. Uh, very few other tools that are specialty tools here. This I refer to as a garbage disposal key. Uh, other guys are going to call it different things. Is it just a glorified hex key? Yes, it is, but uh, they're wonderful for garbage disposals. They allow you to get in through the hole in the very center of the bottom and spin them free, and they also allow you to uh, shift the mounting flange so you can get the garbage disposal on and off easily. Most garbage disposals come with them, not all of them, but most of them, and they're a good thing to keep right under the sink there, handy for the garbage disposal. Now this is a pressure gauge designed to check the pressure in your house. If you look closely, I don't know how close the camera will be able to get, but it also has what, what some of us call a sleepy hand, so it'll stay at its highest mark once the pressure is relieved but this will allow you by screwing it into a hose spigot to determine what your water pressure is at your house. You're looking for no more than 80, you know, really closer to 60 to 65 would be comfortable. You're going to find fluctuations in your water pressure uh, based on a couple of different things. If they've started building in your neighborhood and yet haven't compensated with, this, with the water supply system yet, then it might be lower than normal. Uh, it might jump up if they install a new tank or up the pressure in anticipation of building more houses. But either way, you want to do what it takes to stay below 80, 70, 75, 65, somewhere in that range. Uh, if you are running higher than that, then you, you're going to want to put a, a water pressure regulator in. And uh, we have a chapter on that, so dig that up. Um, otherwise, if it's lower than that, get a hold of your water company and let them know. And uh, it'll be a problem that they'll take care of for you. These are inexpensive, 6 or $7. And like I said, they screw right on a hose spigot and you just make sure no other uh, supply valves or kitchen faucets or anything is on at the time and it'll give you an accurate reading of that. This is a street key. Occasionally you're going to come, come across a need for this when you need to shut off the water to your whole house. Um, sometimes there's ways to do that already plumbed into your house. You might have a shut off valve in the garage near the water heater or 
at some location like that. But there are going to be times where either you don't have one of those or you need to shut it off even to replace that. And you'll just need to go find your water meter in your yard or wherever your water meter is located. And the street key is long enough to get down into most water heater box holes so that you can turn the valve off without crawling around on the grass. So those are a great tool to have handy. Uh, even in an emergency, when something goes wrong, sometimes the best way is just to get the whole house shut off real quick so you can figure out what's going on. Street keys are cheap, eight or nine bucks, you'll be good to go. This is one of those good tools to keep around uh, regardless. So. This is a specialty tool used to remove cartridges on mowing faucets and shower valves, both kitchen and bath faucets and shower valves. Um, if you end up needing to change one of those, you'll see more about how to use this tool in those videos. And this is a great tool. This tool used to be $75 to $100. And this one I just bought recently at a local big box hardware store for 12 bucks. So they've come down dramatically in price. Uh, which, which means the average person can now afford this tool. If you needed this tool before, it was almost worth it just to hire a plumber because he's going to have that tool and uh, that way you don't have to deal with the job at all. But now that they're 12 bucks, you can grab them yourself. It's not a tool you always need, but when you need it, it certainly comes in handy. Now, I just wanted to talk briefly about soldering tools. I'm going to go over it in more detail when you learn how to solder, but we've basically got a couple of different types of tubing cutters. We've got the the kind you just snap on and roll until it cuts. They come in both sizes. Actually, I've seen them in a one inch also, so you can get them in half, three quarter, and one inch. They might have them in three eighths too. I've never looked. Um, and we've got a, a normal clamp style that's built into this awesome ratcheting version that Rigid makes. This one is spring loaded, so once it makes contact, you just screw it two full turns additionally and then just continue to spin it and it, the pressure of the spring loading will work its way through the pipe and make a clean cut. You set it inside its frame and it becomes a ratcheting cutter uh, which is perfect for tight locations and uh, you only have to move the handle a couple of inches to really get a good pass all the way around. Love this tool. Got the emery cloth or sandpaper that's really focused on just getting the copper clean. It comes in a roll similar to this. You could probably use normal sandpaper. This is aluminum oxide. It's not affected by moisture. Uh, and a small strip that you might tear off to do that with will last you quite a while. We've got a reamer that is designed to clean both the inside of the copper pipe after it's been cut and the outside to make sure there's no burrs on there that might interfere with a good clean weld or that might interfere with the path of water. It takes care of that. Uh, we've got solder and a water-soluble flux. They, they do have the old-school flux that needs special chemicals to clean up really, but uh, I've found plenty of success with the water-soluble flux, so that's all I use. A flux brush like this, uh, they're also called acid brushes. I consider them kind of a single-use thing because once you dip them into the flux, they're, they're going to make a mess wherever they go. Uh, but they're cheap and inexpensive, so I usually buy them six at a time or 12 at a time. They're inexpensive that way. We've got a bottle of MAP gas. Now you might choose to go with propane, that's fine, um, but don't try and use MAP gas with a propane torch. You do need to have a MAP gas torch in order to use MAP gas. Um, this is a MAP gas torch, obviously. Torches come in a variety of different styles. Some of them have just a small nozzle that screws onto the bottle with a hose that runs to the actual torch. Some guys really like those because they can hang the bottle off their belt and just use the hose set it on the floor and not have to deal with the weight of the bottle or the direction of the bottle. This is obviously, they don't, they don't like to weld in every possible direction. They get a little funky that way. This particular torch is just a push button torch. Makes it real convenient. It also has a trigger lock so I can leave it on. And in that circumstance, I might stand it up on a table and turn it on and leave it on so that I could operate in the flame with both hands both hands free. It's got a flame adjustment right here on the back. Just turn the dial to adjust the amount of gas that enters the airstream. The last of the PEX tools I was going to show you, we've got some, this is a basic PEX crimper. Uh, they make power crimpers. Uh, this is a standard crimping PEX tool. Uh, you can now get them in the hardware stores for, I don't know, $40, $45. It depends on where you're at. I've seen them for $60. Of course, when I bought these, they were $120 each, so 
<laughs> Yay. Anyways, they've been great. They're adjustable. Um, there's a way to double check them and make sure they're operating properly. Um, obviously using the, the go, no go tool that's included with them to make sure each crimp is crimped properly. Now you can buy a tool that will crimp PEX uh, using a battery operated what essentially looks like a drill. Those are awesome and um, but they're also very expensive. I think the cheapest I've seen them is in the $500 range. So that puts it out of my range of affordability even and, and I do PEX on a somewhat regular basis. So uh, the crimp tools are good and reliable. There is another style of crimp tool for close quarters. It's this smaller guy designed just for those tighter quarters and you essentially you can disassemble it if you need to to get it on and off for the fitting and then you use a standard set of uh, locking jaw like vice grip type pliers to squeeze the end in successive steps until you've got it all the way closed and then using a, a go no go tool just like this just to make sure your crimp is solid. So that'll take care of your pecs. Now, the one other tool, a pex tool that's very convenient uh, is this guy right here. This is a crimp ring remover tool. Now there was a time before I could find this tool and before I knew of anyone making this tool where if I crimped something wrong or I, got, I had some sort of problem with it, I put the wrong end in the wrong place or something like that, my only hope was maybe to get a grinder in there to try and grind that crimp ring off. They're very stuck on there and very challenging. But with this tool set appropriately, it can be set for half inch or three quarter inch by turning this dial. Once you've got it set for the right kind, we're doing half inch. You simply slide that end in and close the blade down on the crimp ring. You'll hear it click. Now it's cut, but it's still not gonna wanna come off. It still takes one or two more crimps in other areas in order to get it to open up so that you can get it off. Now once that's done, because of the design of the tool, you pull off the pecs and you can see the fitting is completely undamaged inside or out and this fitting could now be reused. So that tool, the crimping removal tool, has been fantastic. Okay, only other tool you're going to come across on a regular basis in the world of plumbing is the glorious snake. We love them so. Um, this particular model has got a 25 foot hose. It's a slightly smaller diameter of cable, but it's great for sink drains, uh, kitchens and bathroom sinks. And obviously it's manual, not power. So it takes a little more uh, elbow grease, if you will. But it's a good solid model that I've had for a while. You can see I've cleaned out a drain or two with it over time. Now, if you're going to clear out a drain, like for a toilet, there's a, a special type of tool in the toilet uh, video series. When you look into those, if you've got a clog with the toilet, that it talks about that special kind of snake for that. And then larger snakes for bigger problems or for tub drains or for main lines. And we'll address that in other videos as well. But this is a really basic snake that's good to keep around. If you've got a problem in your kitchen or bathroom drain, this will take care of it. Okay. I think in the world of plumbing, this will really get you started and keep you moving forward. Uh, tools are wonderful. We all love to own them. I still continue to suggest that you buy tools as you need them. Don't go out and blow a whole bunch of money on these tools because you might find that some of them sit around for years before you end up needing them. But otherwise, the right tools and the right knowledge, um, you can do anything because I believe in you. And uh, really what I do isn't rocket science. So if I can handle it, I know you can too.